It is a special mailbag edition of Locked On New York Rangers. Is Keandre Miller a liability? Will the Rangers work hard enough in the playoffs to outlast the competition? And how will our Timmy Panarin fare in the postseason? You're locked on the New York Rangers, your daily podcast on the New York Rangers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, Blue Shirts fans, to episode number 1034 of the Locked On New York Rangers podcast. I'm your host, John Chick. I want to thank you guys, as always, for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. And today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks. If your bet wins, visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. And we are, of course, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So why to go ahead and uh, kind of do a, obviously, listener slash viewer inclusive episode here and just kind of go into the YouTube comment section, see what I could pull out of there and talk about a couple of the things that, you know, you guys uh, have on your minds recently and just kind of go through a couple of those. And that'll be our episode for today. And obviously, Rangers going to be back in action against the Avalanche late tonight, uh, 9 o'clock p.m., Eastern time is when the puck drops, and obviously whatever happens there, we'll cover that in our next episode. But for right now, like I said, let's just go to some of the things that you, know, you guys have on your minds. And I want to start with a comment from NYUJ. It's about Keandre Miller, and, and Miller seems to be kind of establishing himself. I mean, I, I guess you could say this about basically any Ranger defenseman, but seems to be establishing himself as one of the more polarizing players on the New York Rangers. I mean, I'm a fan. I, he hasn't been great um, for the entire season. But I think overall, like I've said in the past, when it comes to Keandre Miller, I think there's been more good than bad, um, especially from a Ranger team that is just absolutely whiffed on draft picks in recent seasons. But anyway, this is our comment uh, from NYU J. Uh, he said, and this was after the Flyer game, of course. He says, great win tonight against the Flyers. I don't want to be Debbie Downer, but seriously, how many times are the Rangers going to turn the puck over these last few months, especially Miller? This will haunt them in the playoffs for sure. Well, you're not being Debbie Downer, Jay. You know, obviously, uh, these no no player, no team is above, you know, some critiques, some scrutiny from time to time. So I appreciate, you know, your thoughts on this. Um, Keandre Miller, I think overall, the last, I'd say about three weeks or so, you know, give or take, I think it's probably some of the best hockey that he's played all season. It started right before Truba got injured, and it subsequently continued, and he's kind of been moving around a little bit. We've seen him with Adam Fox. We've seen him uh, with Braden Schneider as well. But regardless, uh, he seems to be playing better, seems to be you know playing a more physical brand of hockey, taking the body a little bit more often. Um, there have been a couple hits recently where he's knocked uh, some big-name players to the ice with a couple of the checks that he's put on them. We saw him stand up for Jonathan Quick when somebody kind of accidentally on purpose made contact with quick, you know, Miller was there and threw him down to the ice. I forget who that was, but um, bottom line, you know, it just seems like Miller's kind of been sticking his nose into, you know, the action a, a little bit more than maybe we've seen at other times from him uh, throughout this season. And as I mentioned, you know, he seems to be clicking a little bit with Braden Schneider recently. As far as the turnovers, it's a valid concern. I I've talked about this too, when it comes to Miller and maybe the Rangers in general for Miller though, 32 turnovers this season. It's not an astronomical, oh my God, number. I think it's probably a few more than you would like, though, especially from a defenseman and a guy that you know regularly plays in your top four. Uh, that number, 32 turnovers, just for some context here, that is the fourth most by any Ranger this season. Uh, he's behind, in order, Panarin, Mika, and Gustafson. I think Miller's turnovers tend to stand out a little bit more than some of these other guys, though, just because... When Miller turns the puck over, and I've talked about this before too, it seems like it can often be in a really rough situation. Just, you know, a, a head scratch and kind of a decision from Miller where, you know, he'll, he'll kind of just give the puck away. It'll just kind of, you know, slide off of his stick in the defensive zone, or he'll try to pass to an area of the ice that you just don't want to pass. You know, it's one of those passes. It's very uh, low reward and high risk. And sometimes he'll get burned on that. It'll lead directly to a scoring opportunity for, you know, whomever the Rangers might be playing on that night. They tend to be what I would call high-danger turnovers by Keandre Miller. But really, I think that's really 
the only weak part of his game. I think there's been less of that recently. And something else that I want to point out here, for all the talk that, you know, for Miller, oh, he so many turnovers, right? Again, 32, probably a little more than you would like uh, from one of your defensemen who's regularly in the top four. But he's also, in addition to the 32 giveaways, he's got 50 takeaways this season as well. That's plus 18, and that is the best ratio by any player on the New York Rangers. And I don't think a lot of people are aware of that. Keandre Miller leads the Rangers in takeaways by a pretty good margin. The rest of the top five, again, for some context, uh, you got Miller leading the way with 50. You've got Trocek with 43. Mika 42, Lafreniere 42, and Fox with 38. So, you know, again, I mean, that's kind of his Achilles heel, I, I think, are those turnovers, and more specifically, the turnovers that you think that, you know, that, that seem like they could hurt you. And and that's my biggest concern about Miller uh, come playoff time, because you are right, things like that do tend to be magnified in the playoffs. But again, Miller has played better recently, and I'm just, you know, keeping my fingers crossed that that continues and maybe even uh, improves once he's back to his normal defense partner in Jacob Truba. So we'll look forward to him getting back in the lineup and presumably uh, rejoining Keandre Miller. We're going to move on to a comment here from Dennis Pet, uh, P-E-T-T-E. Hope I'm saying that right. I am concerned about the rush against. That can't happen in the playoffs. Yeah, if I was going to sit here and like, and we might do this in a future episode, but if I was going to like make a list of the things that concern me about the Rangers going into the playoffs, that might be in my top three. It does seem like there's, chunks of the season where the Rangers have struggled to defend against the rush or just given up too many odd man rushes in general. Uh, that does seem to be a problem that kind of comes and goes for the Rangers this season. You know, against the Flyers, it was really bad, but we'll give them a little bit of a pass because as we talked about in our episode after that game, uh, the Rangers at that time were playing without three of their top six defense. And so I think that certainly uh, contributed to that. It's one of those things that the Rangers have to shore up a little bit and uh, make sure that you're not giving up I mean, you can't completely eliminate it, but not give up too many, you know, dangerous rushes, odd man rushes, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I think that, you know, has some merit if, if you're concerned about that uh, as it pertains to the Rangers. But hopefully, you know, they, they start to limit that once everybody is healthy again, because it does sound like all those defensemen, you know, should be back sooner rather than later. Uh, another question here from Jay Roots, I think is how you pronounce this. Uh, he says, I watched the Bruins game with their local broadcast. They kept calling Ranger goals a gift. Yes, they were quote-unquote lucky bounces, but if you don't give up on plays and keep pushing, you position yourself for these bounces, and not giving up on plays is having heart. Yeah, the Bruins announcers, you'd be hard-pressed to find uh, any, not even just in hockey, go go to any sport, you'd be hard-pressed to find announcers that are bigger homers than the Bruins announcers. Uh, that That is well-documented, and look, every you know, broadcaster for every team and every sport, they're going to have some allegiances and some loyalty toward whichever team they cover, you know, and, and Sam and Joe are no exception. You know, they want to see the Rangers do well and win and, you know, ultimately hopefully win the Stanley Cup. Um, but yeah, th those guys are out of control. I, I have seen a couple of broadcasts when it comes to the Bruins and man, all, all that's missing in the broadcast booth with those guys sometimes I think is the pom-poms. But um, yeah, other than that, I, I think I agree with your point here. The Rangers, there were a couple of uh, fortunate bounces in that game that went their way. But to your point, and I talked about this when we discussed the win over the Bruins, uh, the Rangers have been working hard and, and, you know, doing a lot of things the right way. And they worked hard in that game. And that was a bit of a grinded out game. And the Rangers just kind of outlasted them. And I'm with you. I, I think, you know, the uh, those breaks, if you even want to call them that, were deserved for the Rangers. And I mean, hey, okay, maybe if you're a Bruins fan and you want to say that's why the Bruins lost the Rangers in that game, fine. But the Rangers won all three games in the regular season. So what's the excuse for the other two wins? I don't think that they were getting lucky breaks left and right uh, in those games as, you know, the Bruins broadcasters would probably have you believe. But we're going to keep everything rolling in just a second. I want to turn our attention to, obviously, more mailbag questions. Uh, if the Rangers have the drive, you know, that kind of have to to succeed in the playoffs, ultimately be the last thing standing. Also going to be talking about Artemi Panarin, his awesome season, and what we can and should expect from him uh, when it comes to the Stanley Cup playoffs. And we're going to do all that fun stuff in just a second. But first, definitely want to let everybody know that today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is brought to you by FanDuel. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets. If your $5 bet wins, that's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops 
until they cut down the net. All right. Also, uh, want to ask you guys a question. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And for the everydayers, as we mentioned, next episode is going to cover whatever happens between the Rangers and Avalanche tonight. Another big test for the Rangers and definitely looking forward to watching that. But for right now, let's keep going with uh, some of your YouTube comments here. And this one comes to us from DM Lebo. Uh, This person says, this team is really good. I do worry about their ability to play with 60 minutes of energy as needed for playoff hockey. They're so good that from what I've seen, when they lose, it often looks self-inflicted. They get too cute with the puck defend by waving their sticks and stop skating hard. If they can minimize or even eliminate those lapses in the playoffs and stay healthy, they will be very dangerous and really could be anyone. So a lot to unpack here. Uh, Let me start with actually the very end of that. I do think the Rangers can beat anybody. I don't think there's a single team in this league that the Rangers are completely incapable of beating in a best of seven series. And honestly, I've talked about this. Maybe it just feels this way. Maybe it always feels this way, but it feels to me like the playoffs and especially the Eastern Conference are more wide open than they've been in a long time. There's some awesome teams, but there seems to be less division from you know the best teams in the Eastern Conference to you know the teams that'll just eat their way, barely eat their way into the playoffs. So that's first and foremost. As far as you know, the the rest of the comment here. You know, I was actually going to talk about this in our most recent episode, the the win over the Flyers, but that game was just crazy, and I kind of ran out of time. So the Rangers, it's nice that they can come back. Their last two uh, home games against the Panthers and the Flyers, they fell behind 2 to nothing in both those games, came back and won both of those games. And that's awesome. It's great that they can, you know, stay up and keep believing in themselves and you know, not just shrug it off and say, well, you know, our record is blah, blah, blah. We've got the best record in the NHL. It doesn't matter if we win this game that much. No, they've been battling back and that's awesome to see, but you almost, you don't want to see them get too comfortable with that. Right. Because to your point in the playoffs, you know, everything is magnified. Everything is big. And if you fall behind one, nothing, you know, a minute or two into the game and you're down two nothing, you know, near the end of the first period or after the first period, then you're kind of setting yourself up to, you know, not have a good time. I mean, it's not like you can't come back in the playoffs either, but I just feel like playoff hockey, again, everything is magnified. And if you do have those lapses, if you do have those little stretches of play where you're not at your sharpest, sometimes that's all it takes for your opponent to really get a jump on you. And that can be the difference in a game or even the difference in the series. You know, that that is certainly possible. And, and you know, reading this comment, it kind of reminds me of a game uh, that is not a pleasant uh, memory for Ranger fans but I still think it might be the greatest game of hockey I've ever seen. And that was game five between the Rangers and the Kings in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Of course, we all know how that ended and it sucked. I mean, there's nothing else you can say. But when you watch that game, it was just an absolute battle. Like there was no let up from any player on either team. Everybody's going full bore. It felt like every inch of that rink was an absolute war. And it really felt, you know, it went into double overtime and almost triple overtime. If I'm remembering correctly, I think it was double overtime when it ended. Um, And it was only 1-1, but it just felt like all it took for one team to have a goal or score a goal or have like a great scoring chance was for the opponent to take their foot off the gas, even for just a second, even for like just one shift or even just part of a shift. Um, It was just a phenomenal hockey game. And it's kind of, uh, to me, it kind of encompasses what playoff hockey is all about, where you really do have to fight every single second of every single game, every single shift. And if you do take a shift off, if you do let up even for, you know, a minute or two, or even less than that, uh, can really come back to bite you. That can be, you know, the difference between, as I said, winning and losing a uh, series. So appreciate the, uh, the the thoughts there from DM. We've also got, I'm going to combine two into one here. We got a comment from Robert Squared and a comment from Sean Lewison. And Robert says, this is about, by the way, we'll get to the comment in a section. This is about the episode I did where we took a look at the President's Trophy possibly being cursed or possibly not being cursed, uh, just for some context here. But this is our question, or our comment, rather, from Robert Squared. 1994 team won the President's Trophy, and Messier held the Prince of Wales Trophy. 
both said to be cursed on their way to their first Stanley Cup in 54 years in what was said to be cursed. And then uh, Sean added, maybe they're immune to the curse. President's Trophy in 1994 and 2024, another 30 years later, it writes itself. Well, hopefully Sean's right. You know, that would be quite the uh, the storybook kind of uh, tale being told here. I mean, obviously the Stanley Cups for the Rangers, as we know, very few, very far between, but that would be a nice round number, right? You know, the 30-year anniversary of the Rangers winning it in 1994, and it would be a storybook finish. I mean, any team that wins the Stanley Cup, it's a storybook finish, you know, because it's very, very difficult to do, and you're the last team standing out of 32, and it's certainly an accomplishment uh, worthy of being celebrated. Um, so yeah, that would be amazing. And as far as, uh, Robert's comments about, uh, Messier holding the Prince of Wales trophy. Yeah. I mean, I, I went back and watched that because I, you know, I kind of forgot about that. And then I saw this comment and I, I remember thinking like, yeah, you know, I think he did hold the trophy and I went back and game seven is on YouTube. So I just went right to the end there and may have watched the Matteo goal just, just for the heck of it. And then, uh, saw the celebration and yeah, Messier went over and he, he held the Prince of Wales trophy. Now, the celebration was somewhat subdued. You know, you could tell just by looking at Messier and the players around him that, you know, nice trophy and everything. And OK, we'll hold it up, whatever. But this isn't the one that we want. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, in a in a world where in a sport, for sure, where there's so much superstition among us fans, among these players, and there's always this debate. Do you touch the Prince of Wales trophy and um, the Western Conference, you know, champion? It's the same thing. Do you touch that trophy? It could be, there could be a case made both ways. The, the, the 2014 Ranger team that went to the finals, I'm almost positive, did not touch the trophy, and then they lost. So, you know what? If they go to the finals this year, hold up the trophy. You don't have to go crazy with it. You don't have to skate around the rink. You don't have to, like, hold it up for the for the fans to touch it, like Messier was doing uh, when the Rangers won the Stanley Cup. But, you know what? Hold that thing up, get a quick picture, and then uh, know that you got to win four more games. I kind of like that approach. Uh, we've got a question here or a comment from... Uh, user 10.11.9, and this person says, 2015 Rangers were better than this team. This is something that, honestly, I could probably do a whole episode about, and we've done comparison episodes like that in the past, you know, sometimes in the offseason. I remember this past offseason, I compared the team going into this year to the team going into last year and felt that this team was better, and lo and behold, uh, here they are on top of the entire NHL standings. Um, but... As far as you know, comparing 2015 to this team, 2015, of course, is the team that made it to the Eastern Conference Final, lost in seven games to the Tampa Bay Lightning. And we don't really need to say anything else about that series other than that, but just wanted to give some context. And to kind of compare and contrast these teams, you could start at goalie, and obviously a phenomenal goalie on either of those two teams. But yeah, I'd give a little bit of an, of an edge to Henrik Lundqvist. You know, he's going to go down as one of the all-time greats and a Hall of Famer. Uh, Igor might also do those things, but he's got a long way to go, uh, you know, just comparatively still just getting started in his NHL career. I would say the 2015 team maybe had a little bit more depth than this team. You look at the fourth line that they had back then, and it was Derek Dorsett, uh, Dominic Moore, Brian Boyle. Those guys, that was a good fourth line, and they had a really uh, nice showing for themselves in the in the playoffs those couple of years there, um, so there was that. I feel like this current Ranger team is a little bit more top heavy. You can see that just by going on cap friendly and seeing the salaries. You see like the top five, six, seven paid players, you know, they're all making a lot of money. And then, you know, down in the lineup, there's guys, you know, at six figures or whatever it might be. Um, but this Ranger team definitely has more scoring threats than the 2015 team. Uh, 2015, I had to go back and find this out, but in the regular season, Rick Nash led the team with 69 points. This Ranger team could somewhat easily end up with five players that eclipse that number. Um, it, it's the five players on the top power play unit. They could all easily end up with more than 69 points. So I, I do think this team has a little bit more firepower, a little bit more punch, especially uh, from the top of the roster type guys. And I think I would take the Ranger defenseman on this current team over the 2015 team. When you look back at the 2015 team, Dan Boyle, I, I thought he was kind of a liability. He had a really nice career, but kind of on his last legs by the time he got to the Rangers. Uh, I liked Keith Yandel, but I feel like I liked Yandel more than most Ranger fans did. There were some Ranger fans that saw him as kind of a liability. Mark Stahl always made me nervous. I never really got around that for his entire, and I have nothing against Stahl, but, um, you know, he, he, he just made me nervous. I, he's somebody that I felt like when he was on the ice, I, I just kind of had to hold my breath a little bit. I know some other Ranger fans felt that way as well. Uh, you know, Kevin Klein, I, I think, was kind of an underappreciated defenseman for that team. You know, just kind of a gritty, you know, just do your job kind of a player. 
And then you had McDonough and Girardi, and they were both tough as nails and, you know, very good defensemen. But Girardi struggled in the playoffs that year a little bit. Um, so, yeah, I, I think I like this year's uh, group of defensemen more than the 2015 team. So to put it all together, I got to disagree. I, I think this team is better than the 2015 New York Rainier team. And it could be debated. Um, again, I could spend a whole episode on that if I wanted to, but we definitely want to move on to a couple of other questions here, including uh, one about Artemi Panarin, which we will get to in just a second. First, though, we definitely would like to let everybody know that today's episode of Locked on New York Rangers is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you will always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you are burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need at all the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to U.S. customers. All right, let's go ahead and keep everything rolling here. We get a question from Morgan Knox, and the question, well, it's not really for me. It's for everybody. Um, this is about Artemi Panarin. Wonder where all the haters after last season fried up and blew away to. I said then, I hope he scores 150 next year just to shut him up. Well done, Artemi. Yeah, Panarin's been awesome. I mean, that that's kind of the, uh, probably one of the more obvious things I've ever said on this podcast, but I can remember like during the off season, you know, people were, and look, there, if you were down on Artemi Panarin after what you saw in that playoff series against the Devils last year, that's okay. That's completely fine. And you weren't the only one. I was down on him too. Um, he was one of many, many players on the Rangers that just did not get the job done uh, last year in the postseason. But I'm seeing things like, oh, they got to trade Panarin. And everybody like, I don't know if they just think that all the players will waive their no trade clause or they forget that these players have the no trade clauses or whatever the case might be. But Artemi Panarin has a full no move clause for the duration of his contract. So if he doesn't want to go anywhere, he's not going anywhere. And I don't think there's too many Ranger fans right now that are pushing for a trade uh, of Artemi Panarin. So that's first and foremost. Um, but, you know, you see people saying things like, oh, let's let's boo Artemi Panarin on opening night. Again, I, I just don't know what that solves. And I know, you know, years and years ago, Mark Messier got booed on opening night and the Rangers won the Stanley Cup this year. I get that. You know, it's not like it would, um, you know, destroy the Rangers' chances of having a successful season. But I just don't know what exactly that would accomplish. And yeah, I mean, Panarin has is, is gone out there and established himself as a legitimate uh, Hart Trophy candidate. And I think that, you know, I don't know that he's going to win it. He probably won't win it. But I think, I've talked about this in the past, when it comes to, the Hart Trophy, it goes to the most valuable player, not necessarily the best player. And of course, there are years that that can be the same player, but most valuable means if you take this guy away from his team, his team is kind of like in some trouble. And I, I think Artemi Panarin embodies that more than uh, some of the other candidates. There's some great choices, and whoever wins the MVP, whoever wins the Hart, um, you know, I'm not going to have any issues with it, but I do think Artemi Panarin deserves serious consideration when it comes to that. And yeah, what a, what an awesome season after just a miserable seven games in the playoffs last year for the Breadman. This comes to us from Kiefer Dowd. My favorite people on the internet are ones that just make claims that are easily debunked. Thank you for doing the research for them and me. I looked up where we stood in hits and saw seventh, so more physical than most in the in the NHL. I have no idea why people think we aren't physical. Yeah, Kiefer is talking about an episode I did where I tried to like debunk some myths around the Rangers, and that was maybe the one where, you know, it, it seems to come to the forefront as much or more than anything else with the Rangers. When it comes to people criticizing them and critiquing them, it's always that they aren't physical enough. And I went through, you know, I, I listed all the players on the Rangers that play with toughness, that play with snarl, that play with grit, whether it's Lindgren, um, Truba, Keandre Miller, you could even throw in, him in there too. I mean, he gets a lot of hits. Uh, you know, Barclay Goodrow, obviously Matt Rempe, uh, Vincent Trocek, he'll stick his nose in there uh, really good as well. Um, you know, a couple others, VZ play. He doesn't really rack up the hits, VZ, but he plays like a gritty style as well. And I don't really know where a lot of that comes from. It's just one of those things. It's a, a little bit of a crutch. And, and when the Rangers do 
lose games. I don't think it's very often because they got pushed around. The other team was so much more physical. I mean, they'll lose slightly the physicality battle on, on certain nights, or maybe they'll get out hit on certain nights. But when the Rangers lose, to me, it's usually because, you know, they, they gave up too many odd man rushes, or they did that thing that we all love where they fall asleep on the shift that follows a goal. Or, you know, Igor Shosturkin was, I mean, he's been awesome lately, but he was really hurting them uh, at parts of the season, you know, earlier in the year. Um, you know, maybe just a night where you don't have that extra gear, um, a slow start to the game, a slow start to the period. Those are the reasons when the Rangers do lose, it's usually for those reasons. And, you know, e even looking at it, I, I don't know how many of those things uh, negatively impact the Rangers more than they do other teams around the league. You know, do other teams have these same issues? Do they have them to the same degree as the Rangers? Not the thing with the, the shift after the goal. That That's all the Rangers right there. I, I got to believe that, um, as, as far as that's concerned, the, that hurts the Rangers probably as much or more than any team in the NHL, certainly any playoff team or team that's going to be going to the playoffs in the NHL. But again, you know, the, the lack of physicality, I, I think it's just what I described it in the last episode. It's a myth. The Rangers hit the Rangers play physical hockey. Um, could they step it up a little bit in that area? Do they need to step it up in that area a little bit more? Or so, you know, in the playoffs, you know, that's possible, but um, to me, they, they, they're not a team that goes out there and gets pushed around very often. Most Laviolette teams do not get pushed around, and I don't think this Ranger team is really uh, any exception to the rule. So as far as this supposed lack of physicality, um, that's pretty low on my list of concerns for the Rangers uh, going into the playoffs. We've got this from Sama. Uh, Kreider has been invisible lately. He and Mika need to find their form quick. Mika showed signs of finally getting out of bed, <laughs> only for Kreider to take a nap. Anyone remember when his last goal was? So this uh, comment was a couple of uh, episodes ago and a couple of games ago as a result of that. But to answer the question here, uh, Kreider's last goal was six games ago at Pittsburgh. Seemed to be picking it back up. He had a three-point performance in that game. And he had kind of been going through a little bit of a hot stretch right before that, you know, at least the last five games before that, uh, give or take. But in the five games since uh, he scored against Pittsburgh and had the three-point performance, uh, Kreider has no goals. One assist, he is an even plus minus, and he's been losing playing time. We've, we've seen there be repercussions for Kreider, you know, just not seeming as dialed in and as locked in as he needs to be. Um, there was a game against the Islanders recently where he only got 14 minutes, 50 seconds of ice time. And then against the Bruins, only 14 minutes and 46 seconds of ice time. And for some context there, those two time on the ice totals are his second and fourth fewest totals of the season. And the other two games, I went back and looked it up. They, they were basically blowouts. The, the first one was actually uh, against Buffalo on opening night. And that game was, you know, uh, very one-sided. And then there was a game against Detroit where he didn't have a ton of ice time. Rangers were up 5 nothing. Detroit actually did score three times in the third period. But I get the feeling his low ice total for those games probably had a lot more to do with the fact that it was lopsided other than him being, like, disciplined or anything. These last two... Uh, low time on the ice totals for Kreider seem very intentional, very deliberate, and kind of a message being sent by Peter Laviolette. And I like the fact that Laviolette can send that message without completely embarrassing him, completely burying him. You know, this is a little bit of a kick in the rear end to, to just pick it up a little bit. Um, you know, in those same games, we saw Kreider on the ice, you know, late when the score was, you know, tight or whatever the case was in those games. So it's not like he was glued to the bench for the rest of the game, but I do like the uh, the message being sent there. And Again, my, my theory that I'm not even sure if this is true or not, but maybe Mika and Kreider, they know where the Rangers are in the standings. They know they're going to be in the playoffs. They know what it takes to get through the playoffs. You know, we've seen Kreider for sure has been on a lot of deep playoff runs, including the Stanley Cup final. And maybe they're saving a little bit in the tank. I, I can only hope that that is indeed the case. But we'll see uh, what happens going forward. But yeah, Kreider, be nice to see him pick it up a little bit, you know, heading into the playoffs this season. One final comment here from Michael Giovanni. I wait for each game like a puppy waiting to eat. This has been one magnificent hell of a ride, and the best is yet to come, LGR. I wanted to end on something positive, and that's obviously a cool comment there from Michael. And, yeah, it's been a heck of a season. And again, for, for Ranger fans that always find something negative, and, look, you can critique this team all you want. I mean, I've done it on here. We've all done it from time to time. But I really do hope that Ranger fans out there are getting some happiness, some joy, some fun out of watching the team that if you just go by record is the best team in the NHL. I hope that's the case. And, you know, we'll see what happens in the playoffs. You, you never know a uh, 16 team tournament. 
for my money, every team in this sport that makes the playoffs legitimately has at least a shot at being the final team standing, and we'll see if the Rangers can pull it off. But um, yeah, Rangers right now, by the way, still the only uh, team to clinch a playoff spot. So thank you guys for these you know, comments in the YouTube comment section. Really appreciate it. We'll do at least one more of these, I think, before the playoffs start. Be a lot of fun. And uh, definitely looking forward to watching the Rangers take on the Avalanche a little bit later tonight. No starting goalie announced for the Rangers uh, as of me hitting the record button 30 minutes ago. And for the Avalanche, going to see our old buddy, Alex Georgiev. But that will do it for today, guys. Once again, if you'd like to get in touch with this podcast, please send an email to LockedOnNYRangers at gmail.com. Once again, that is LockedOnNYRangers at gmail.com. Definitely give us a follow on Twitter as well, at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. Once again, that's at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. And definitely subscribe to Locked On New York Rangers YouTube channel. We are closing in on 3,000 subscribers. So uh, thank you guys who have already subscribed. That's just awesome. It's it's so cool to see um, you know, this little Ranger community grow a little bit here. And um, also, you know, I've mentioned this in the past, most episodes premiere on YouTube before the audio platform. So you'll definitely want to subscribe. And there's a couple of things that are actually YouTube only as well. But as I said, as you know, that, that we can call it there for today. And uh, thank you guys as always. And I will see you as always next time.